you have to be your own metric. And as soon as, if the tempo changes abruptly, you have to almost, before you even play the piece, you have to think about the two tempos and where they're going to be. And you have to get that pulse in your head. Uh, the best instructional device you could have is a recording device. And you record yourself playing, and, and you listen back to it, and you think to yourself, am I sticking with the time? Am I, uh, am I sticking with the tempo? Am I straying from it? Um, I'll just give you an example. I'll play. Uh, I'll just play over, like a B flat seven chord. Uh, with and here's the tempo: one, two, As soon as I start playing a, a, a tune, that's where the time is, and it doesn't doesn't change. Just try that, you know. Try before you play a piece. Think about the tempos ahead of time. Practice a little bit of each one, and then you can put the two of them together. Um, would you? Do you practice? Do you ever practice uh, and, and record it, and then listen back to it? No. Yeah, try that. Okay. I've already shown you the uh, A to B. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be another fifty dollars, right? That's it. <laughs> By agent, yes. Okay. You get your ten percent. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's such a great thing to do. And then you you listen back. You know, I was talking about the time, right? Yeah. So uh, you'll hear right away. For example, even when you play the melody, you'll notice if you if you took too long on a rest before you came in. And then you go back and try it again, and, and you, you practice with a metronome and then practice without the metronome. And then eventually you'll, you'll be strong enough to, to have your own metronome. But, but try that, because you're going to hear all kinds of things, and you don't get, don't get bugged listening to yourself. You know, just to think of it as be really objective and say, well, why did this work? Why didn't this work? You know, why am I getting off here? You know, what's going on? And then you go back and do it again.